Good morning, you two. This is one of my favourite spelling starters because normally when children come in in the morning and they sit down on the carpet and this is on the board, they all look very confused for quite a long time. And then suddenly someone will work out the first compound word and after that it's very quick to get the others. So we've got lots of pictures here and what they make is two pictures can be joined together to make a compound word. And that means two separate words which when you put them together, make a new word. And so I'm going to explain what all the pictures are. We've got rain, we've got a house, we've got a stick, we've got a brush, we've got a ball, we've got a bow, we've got lips or lip, we've got a foot and a fly, a cow, and this one is light, we've got butter and we've got a tooth. Now, what you've got to do is think about what new word could you make by joining together two of those pictures. So please pause and have a think first because it's no fun just copying them once you know them. So have a think first, pause this and see if you can work any of them out. Right, I wonder how well you did. Maybe you've got some grown-ups to help you. I think everyone would find this tricky when you first look at it. So I'm going to start lining them up in their pairs. So we've got the cow. That actually goes with the boy. And that makes cow boy. The tooth goes with the brush. Tooth brush. The lip goes with the stick. The lip stick. The light, and this is a tricky one because it does look a bit like the sun, goes with the house. The light house. Then we've got the ball, goes with the foot. Let's try and put them the right way around. So we've got foot, ball, the bow. I wonder if anyone got this one. That goes with the rain to make rain bow. So if you look at the two pictures we've got left up here, what do you think that would be? We've got butter, we've got fly. So that one is butterfly. So now... I want you to make sure you write those words down. And when you write them, you don't need to leave a gap because it becomes a new noun. It's a compound noun. It's one word. So that's lighthouse, lip, stick. And then we've got rain with the long A sound. Rain, B, O, rainbow. And then we've got foot. Ball, the all sound on the end there. And we've got a tooth. So tooth, oo, brush. And we've got a cow. Boy, remember no gap in between them. And then a butter. And that's one of those double consonant words because it's got an us sound. A butter fly. So can you write those neatly in your book and see if you can think of any more? Because there are lots of words in English that are compound nouns. Now we're going to look at a piece of non-fiction writing about elephants. And then we're going to talk about some of the features of this piece of writing. So I want you to follow it as I'm reading it. Elephants are the largest land-dwelling mammals on Earth and they can live for up to 70 years. Elephants are brown to dark grey in colour and have long, coarse hairs sparsely covering their bodies. They have very thick skin that keeps them cool. Elephant trunks serve as another limb and they may contain more than 40,000 muscles that help the elephant use it to gather food and water. They also have large ears and thick tree trunk-like legs to support their weight. There are two species of elephants, the African elephant and the Asian elephant. There are a number of differences between the two species. Overall size, ear size, tusks and shape of the back and forehead among others. The basic diet of the elephant includes grasses, leaves, bamboo, bark and roots. Also, they are known to eat crops like banana and sugarcane, which are grown by farmers. Adult elephants eat 300 to 400 pounds of food per day. So first of all, I've had a look at the types of words. 
And even though it's non-fiction, there are quite a few adjectives which I've coloured in in light blue. So we've got largest land dwelling. We've got they are brown to dark grey. They've got long, coarse hairs. Coarse means like rough. They've got thick skin. They have large ears and thick tree trunk legs. And these two are quite interesting. These two here, African and Asian, because those are adjectives because they're describing something as African, as from Africa, but they have capital letters because they relate to the proper nouns, Africa and Asia. And then we've got basic and we've got di adult. Now there are also some conjunctions, lots of ands. There's a few ands. There's one that, they have 40,000 muscles that help the elephant use it to gather food and water. There is also one Lee adverb. So there's one adverb with Lee on it. I'm going to change the colour, see if you can spot it. It's to do with the hair that covers their bodies and it's how it covers their bodies. And it says it's sparsely covering their body. And that means there's not a lot of it. So although they're hairy, they haven't got a lot of hair. So now I've had a look at the punctuation and I've coloured in the full stops. I hope I've got all of them. They're very tiny, they're quite hard to see. So they're not at the end of every line, remember. They're sort of dotted about the writing. And after all the full stops, there are capital letters. And the title, of course, up the top there, has got a capital letter. And of course, it starts with a capital letter. Now, if you look closely, there's another type of punctuation. There's two others that you might, there's one you may never have seen before. And there's one that we're going to talk about today called commas. I'm just going to see if I can find some commas. Oh, there's one there. And there's one there. Oh, there's a few down here. There's one there. There's one there. And there's one there. And there's also one up there, isn't there, in between 40 and that's to show that it's 40,000. It just makes the number easier to say so you don't have to count all the zeros. But why do you think those other ones are there? So I'm going to read out the sentences that have got commas in. There are a number of differences between the two species. Overall size, ear size, tusks and shape of the back, and for of, the back of the forehead among others. So why do you think those commas are there? And then the next one says... The basic diet of the elephant includes grasses, leaves, bamboo, bark and roots. So those are actually lists. When you have a list of words, you can separate the list with commas. And there's also something else that we're going to talk about later on this year. There's a colon up there that shows there's going to be a list. I think there was another colon somewhere near the top. Let's see if I can find it. Yep, there's the other colon. So when you're writing a list of things, if you're writing it like a shopping list where you write one thing under another, you don't need commas, you don't need punctuation. You could maybe have bullet points. But if you're writing it along in a sentence, it helps separate the things. It makes it easier to read. Now, one of the very important rules in English is you do not have a comma before and. And that rule is quite particular to our country, to England. If you read a book that's written in America or printed in America, it will have a comma before an and. But when we're writing, you either have a comma or you have and. You never have both. So if you're using and, you don't use the comma. And if you're using a comma, you never put and right next to it. So our TRP for today's lesson is can I use commas in lists? So we've got some sentences here about our topic that have all got lists in them but no commas and you have to decide where to put the commas. So sentence number one, elephant families are made up of bulls, cows and calves. Number two, Elephants eat leaves, grasses, roots and fruit. Number three. Elephants, zebras, giraffes and lions are all found in Kenya. And then if I can move it up a bit. We've got number four. 
They use their trunk to breathe, pick up food, collect water and as a snorkel when swimming. So remember, you can't ever put the comma before the and. Now, when we do our punctuation karate, there's a sign for a comma. It's like you cup your hand and you go shh for the comma sign. So elephant families are made up of bulls, shh, cows and calves. So that top one there only needs one comma. See if I can pull one down. So that's where that one would go. And I'm going to show you the second one as well. And then I want you to have a go at copying the others out neatly and putting the commas in. So number two, elephants eat leaves, shh, grasses, shh, roots and fruit. So that one's going to need two. So it's going to need one after leaves, shh, grasses, shh roots and fruits. Now remember, it doesn't need one before the and. The and, when you're writing a list in a sentence, the and always is the last bit of the list. So and fruit is the end of that list and calves is the end of that list. And where's this one? And lions is the end of that list. So I want you now to have a go at writing those out neatly and putting the commas in. Finally, if you've got your pack, your new pack from school, there is an activity sheet in there which has a slightly trickier version of this activity. The sentences are the same, most of them, but the ands are in there. So you have to actually chop out the ands. So we've got elephants and lions and zebras and giraffes all live on the savannah in Kenya. So what your job there is, is to cross out the extra ands and put commas in instead. Remember, you keep the last and. Ethiopia and Sudan and Tanzania and Uganda and Somalia all have a border with Kenya. So the only and you'd keep would be and Somalia. The others you'd have to cross out. So we've got elephants use their trunks to breathe and suck up water and carry things and stroke their family. So you'd just leave in and stroke their family and you'd cross out the others. We've got elephants eat grasses and small plants and fruit and twigs and tree bark and roots. You're going to need lots of commas for that one. Oranges and tangerines and avocados and pineapples and bananas all grow in Kenya. And the last one, a lion's prey includes antelopes and wildebeest and zebras and young elephants and hippos and rhinos and giraffes. So you can see why you need to use commas instead of all those ands. So you don't actually have to write those ones out again. You can just cross out the ands and replace them with commas. But remember, always keep the last and. If you want to practice your handwriting, you could write them in your book. When we do this lesson at school, you actually have to write those out in your book. So good luck with those. And I'll see if I can put a link to the karate punctuation video that's quite old, so I might not be able to find it.